Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and with Christmas only three months away I figured now would be a good time to get a head start on talking about some of the best flight sim hardware and controllers that I have had the privilege to use. I'm going to talk to you guys about whether you're a general aviation enthusiast, maybe you're someone who wants a little bit of both, or you want one set that can do it all. We're going to be talking about the higher end price points and the mid range price points all the way down to some of the lower end stuff to try to give a little bit of something for everybody. So stick around guys, because hopefully I'll have some information that you'll enjoy. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, so let's jump right into it. We are gonna start out by first talking about the aviation enthusiast who wants one configuration that can sort of do it all. Now guys, I am a big Thrustmaster fan. I'm a Verpal fan. I am a Honeycomb fan. I've worked with just about all of it at this point. So I'm gonna give you guys my explanation or my reasons for, or yeah explanation to why I'm picking Verpal as your starting point. Now, the idea behind this is this is going to be for the one size fits all kind of configuration or someone who wants to buy both sets, a GA set, as well as um, your flight stick, fighter's jet, um, helicopter configuration, okay? So we're going with Verpal to start with my all around. My cockpit behind me that I do most of my filming on, you guys, is a Verpal configuration. Um, now, before, before that, the motion pit that's right next to me over here is a Thrustmaster configuration. I mean, all the way around. So I have experience with both. I like both. We're going to talk about why I'm going with Verpal. I find the Verpal hardware to be much more uh, better constructed. It is more expensive once you've picked everything else up. So that's a critical piece to put in. But in my time of, of working with flight sim hardware and having to purchase things myself, and coming up from starting from an X55 stick and throttle, I actually started with the 3D Extreme from Microsoft, um, yeah, from Windows, um, and <laughs> worked my way up to where we are today. So I've used some of the worst, I've used some of the best, um, and my reasoning for Verpal is the construction is very, very nice. The configuration options are almost endless. Everything from changing tension springs to cams to then having uh, fine-tuned tension adjustments right on the hardware where you can make very quick adjustments right on the fly to tension, centering, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, the configuration software itself is extremely versatile, um, has... Uh, configuration options for both press, release, hold options. You can actually increase those configurations and change them. I'm not going to get into all that, but the software can do a ton. So you have the software and uh, the hardware to combine. It makes a really awesome package. So starting with the hardware, I recommend the, the uh, uh, MC3 base. Now they also do have the Warbird D that is more designed for desktop use. The, the VPC or yeah, the uh, 50M3 is more designed for use with an extension. However, I don't use mine with an extension. Um, and I run the toughest springs with the uh, no centering cams in them. And uh, I like the shorter throw. It's got a shorter throw to it, but it's very, very precise is what I love about this base. Very, very precise. For the grip, for starting out, for again, a one size fits all kind of thing, I recommend the 50CM2. The 50CM2 has buttons and switches and hats and levers. The nice thing about the paddle lever here is it's analog. Uh, so you can also use it as a brake axis. For example, the Spitfire, that's how it breaks. Uh, just to toss an idea out. Um, it can be either a button to press. So if like you're using an autopilot release, you can do that. Or it has an, it can be used as an axis. So you can be used as a, like I said, a, a good example is a braking axis. Um, the other thing, like I said, hats. One, two, three, four are all hats. There is a three position switch up on the other side of this button here. You got the top and bottom button here. There's just, there's a ton of different configurations option. There's a trigger safety switch. Let's see if I can find that picture. Yep, there it is right there. Um, that can be lifted up and that can also be a button up, button down um, and a squeeze button. So it can be technically a second trigger. 
The trigger itself is two stage. Um, so it gives you a ton of configuration options, ton of configuration options, and it's very, very comfortable. Um, I have very big hands, uh, so finding comfortable grips for me is tough. It really is. Um, and this one I absolutely love. My hand just rests right where it belongs, and I don't have any issues with it. Okay, the other cool thing is that they're starting to drop in price, um, so be keeping that in mind. Same thing with the throttle here. The 50CM3 thr throttle is the same game. Um, all the same configuration options, only difference is here. You have a five mode switch right there. So you can switch it. And if you switch modes, all of the buttons that you have mapped, everything that is mapped changes to do something else. So it makes it very, very nice. The, the configuration options are endless. Uh, then it becomes just a matter of remembering what mode you're in. So if you're someone who's limited on money, and believe it or not, I know that's crazy when you're looking at the prices of this hardware. If you're limited on money, I recommend saving up and going with these two configurations. Because again, the five mode options on the throttle uh, give you, again, endless control. In mode one here, or mode zero, I guess, these could be all of your starting switches, APU, battery, generators, etc., or whatever your combat preference is. Switch this rotary over to mode one, and all of these buttons can now do something completely different. And it's all of the buttons can do something completely different. Um, and you just change the modes. You know, you can have a combat mode, a startup mode, a shutdown mode, a landing mode, and it makes it very, very nice. Um, it's, it's the other thing is again with the tension, the tension is actually controlled underneath it with a, uh, an actual wrench. I think it's either a 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, something like that wrench that you actually crank them down yourself. Um, and you can tension, uh, change the tension independently. So the left throttle can have more tension than the right and vice versa, right? The lift gates uh, for the uh, afterburner detents, and actually it's not even afterburn detents because the detents can be moved. You can have forward and aft detents, push through detents, lift detents, it doesn't matter. Uh, they have a ton of different detent options and you can configure them however you like and what's comfortable for you in your flight system configuration. So that makes it very, very nice. Um, and then there's the overall build quality. The build quality is absolutely fantastic. The resolution on both the stick and the throttle um, is fantastic. Just minor movements, and you can see that correction being adjusted inside the sim. So they are wonderful for precision flying, precision uh, power adjustments, and things like that. They have incredibly high sense uh, or a high resolution range, uh, which gives you much more finite control of the in sim controls. Uh, again, that being that being throttle, flight maneuvers, things like that. Uh, the Verpal CM3 base has been absolutely fantastic for things like air-to-air -air refueling that require a bunch of very small, or helicopter flying, very small corrections, very awesome. Add an extension onto that, which they do sell, and it's it's amazing, it's amazing, it's, yeah, you'd have to try it. Uh, again, this stuff gets very expensive, but it's one of those things where, that's why I started with this stuff, is because it's a one and done. If, if you want one sim pit that can do it all, but you don't have a ton of money, um, save up, buy this stuff once, get your configuration done, and it will give you everything you need. Maybe not everything you want, but these setups will give you everything that you need with plenty of option to uh, reconfigure on the fly, okay? Uh, and finally, the rudder pedals. This was a tough choice. This was a very tough choice. It was either these or for me, it was my Thrustmaster TPR rudder pedals that are on my uh, motion pit. The Thrustmaster TPRs, I've had for a long time. They have been flawless. I have had no issues with them, none. The only reason, there are two reasons why these ones beat the Thrustmaster TPRs for me. And guys, please remember, this is all my personal opinion. Um, and the two reasons are, number one, I actually find these to be more comfortable on the ankles and calves. If you're like me and you're very long-legged, um, even the Next Level Racing uh, cockpit that I have over there where these are installed, um, my, my legs are, are up at a pretty good angle. Because the angle adjustment that are offered on these is much, much better and much more realistic to me than what's offered on the TPRs. TPRs, you can do some, some angle adjustment, um, but that's not quite as comfortable. These are much more comfortable for me to use. Uh, your feet are more at a relaxed angle than you are with the TPRs. 
even with the TPRs angled back and the configuration set back, with these, your, your, your feet are resting on the pedals themselves. Your heels are on the pedals themselves. Uh, so it makes it much more comfortable. You're at a much more flat angle. So your feet are doing this versus this, if that makes sense, like you are with the TPRs. Um, now, again, guys, I cannot stress it. I love my TPRs. They are on the motion pit right now. Um, but the option, reason two, these are cheaper than the TPRs. Uh, the Thrustmaster TPRs, I think, are still right around 500 US dollars. Um, and with these, again, same thing that we talked about before. Springs can be changed. Tension can be increased. Angles can be increased. Pedals can be changed. You have the heel place that you see there on the screen that can be added and removed. Uh, configuration options are much, much lighter. These have a lower profile as well. Um, obviously, the Thrustmaster TPR, guys, is probably i'm trying to keep myself in the camera that big from base to top where these the total profile is probably like this okay um maybe a little higher than that but you guys get what i'm getting at the tprs are much larger um they're much heavier much 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 more difficult to move around these uh mounting them was actually really awesome so mounting them to the pit i actually really liked the way they did this these bolts here, 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 and then the other one on the other side, remove the feet. You just take the feet right off. And then so the only thing that gets mounted is everything from this box up, obviously. Um, and then you just use those same bolts and go up from underneath your mounting pit and tighten them back down. Um, really slick mounting system. It was really nice and made them even more further low profile, right? Um, so you don't have this big block again. Uh, and again, the configurations was on point um the movement ability that you have the ability to very easily adjust tensions on both the toe brake axis and the uh, rudder axis um very very nice and again i, I can't i'm gonna say it one more time i love my thrustmaster tprs i would not get rid of them um just so we're we're, we're out there uh but these for those reasons that i've mentioned to, in my book are the better bang for the buck Okay, and that's what this is all about. Okay, so that is my configuration recommendations for someone who wants a one and done, um, one cockpit that will do it all. Okay, you can do general aviation with it, you can do fighter jets with it, you can do airliners with it, you can do helicopters with it. Now, the one stipulation I will give to helicopters, if you can afford it, if it is within the budget, um, again, come here and uh, look at the Verpal Collectives. Um, this is the one that I currently have on my rig right now, okay? Um, and then obviously you have to get the Collective Grip. They have now three different variants. Now they have the newest uh, Apache, okay? That's, uh, I don't believe it actually comes out until January. You can see there it says pre-order, but this is a replica of the Apache. Um, and I love it. But right now what I'm using, in case you guys are wondering, Collective Grips. Oh, come on. I have this one here, the Blackhawk um, replica, and I love it. It changes your helicopter experience dramatically. But again, now you're looking at another 500 US dollars just for that. This stuff is expensive. I am not trying to deny that. What I'm trying to do, do is, um, given my history and my past, uh, I, I used to, we used to live paycheck to paycheck, dime to dime, penny to penny. And so everything that I spent um, needed to have value. And I have on more than one occasion, like I said, my uh, Logitech X55 throttle and stick. I thought it was so cool when I bought that and I hated it. It was it was garbage, ghosted. Um, the switches were crap. The axes were crap, blah, 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 blah. Go on and on. I'm not going to make it about uh, Logitech here. Um, and so what I have found, you know, I had to save up and save up and save up for the Thrustmaster Warthog. And that was a great one. That's another great option too. Like make that honorary mention, just like the Thrustmaster TPRs. Thrustmaster Warthog is phenomenal. Um, my thing about the Warthog is it's obviously very uh, flight specific, right? It's does, it is a replica of the A10C. Um, so the reason why I picked the Verpal throttle and Verpal controls on that is it makes customization and flying other aircraft a bit more mentally easier to put together 
because you're not basing it off of a, of a device that is designed around a specific aircraft. It, it makes it much easier to make that mental association, at least for me, to make all those switches do whatever you want and change from aircraft to aircraft. Okay. Anyway, I digress. So that's my recommendation for someone who wants a one and done one cockpit that does it all. And you'll be happy with your purchases at the end. Even if it takes a while to get those purchases completed, you will be very happy with them. Now we're going to move over into sort of um, a cheaper end budget on that. If you don't have the money for all of this stuff, I'm going to give you my next recommendation for again, sort of a one and done option. This is going to be more for desktop pilots. So there we go. We are back to Thrustmaster. Um, I have tried two Thrustmaster configurations. Okay. Um, we, I have tried the um, Boeing set with the Boeing yoke and the throttle. Um, and I have the TCA Airbus kit. Okay. And the throttle is on the other side over here. Um, actually, it was. I have the Bravo next to me, but the throttle is up here. Anyway, digress. Um, I picked this one over the Boeing set. Here's why. Because again, like we just previously talked about, this can be can be a one and done. It has the twist grip for your rudder axis. It has the two throttles. It has your flap levers. It has your speed brake lever. It has ignition switches, has parking brakes, um, has buttons that can be used for say battery, your togas, your auto throttles, all that's available there. Plus all of the buttons that you see on the stick itself. Um, and even that little switch on the back that is, or it's not a switch, it's an axis. It is a throttle. I wouldn't recommend using that for this, but if you're in a pinch, this is a good recommendation. Um, but my biggest thing is also left or right-handed. doesn't matter what side you're on. You, you, you have the same controls on both sides. So if you want to be right lefty, doesn't matter. Um, so if you're looking for a budget purchase, maybe you, or like Xbox. Okay. This would be a great thing for the Xbox out in the living room. Uh, or for someone, you know, uh, one of your children or whatever it may be, or even for yourself, you're in a small room. This is a great one and done option that will get you up and moving. The detents for the Airbus can be removed. So you can just have that nice, smooth throttle axis if you want. Or you can put the detents in where you get the um, climb, flex, toga, etc. right? So I picked this one again over the Boeing because it is more versatile. Uh, and you can fly just about any aircraft you want with it. If, even if you, if you were getting into Starlet like I did, I started DCS World with the Microsoft 3D Extreme. I don't recommend it, but if you're in a pinch, this will this will get you going. You you have again your two independent throttles, flap levers, things like that. You could do it. You could absolutely do it. And it's got enough buttons on it where even in DCS World, you, you'd be okay. It'd be at least a good starting point. So again. I'm recommending this for the budget purchase or Xbox purchase, something that you want to be able to put away very easily. This is my recommendation of all the controls that I've tried. It's uh, very, for the most part, it's pretty low form factor. So again, you can put it up on a shelf, put it up on your entertainment center, entertainment center if you're in the living room, maybe put it under a cubby. This is a good one to, to do that with. Um, then the other thing is, is that the cable, the device is daisy chain. So the throttle plugs into the flight stick, the flight stick plugs into your PC or slash Xbox. Um, and that makes it real easy. Uh, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, there's no program required. You plug it in, it knows what everything is, and off you go. If you want to change them, you have that option, but it is essentially plug and play, especially for the Airbus, all right? Um, and then for those of you who don't know how Microsoft Flight Simulator does its control schemes, if it works for the Airbus, it will do the same thing in any other aircraft. Landing gear is going to be landing gear. Um, starter is going to be starter. Parking brake will be parking brake no matter what plane you're in. It doesn't break it down by the aircraft, like, uh, for example, like DCS World does. DCS World, every time you get a new plane, you need to configure controls for that plane specifically. Microsoft, it's generalized. It's just, this is my landing light switch for all my aircraft, okay? Now, we're, let's talk about moving into more specifically into, now we're gonna move into the general aviation and very uh, specific cockpit build. And this is where we're gonna get into my personal what my personal belief on the best bang for your buck it is not the best hardware out there it is not the number one uh there is hardware out there that is far superior to this uh, but it's also far more expensive and i mean far more um up until honeycomb a couple years ago released the alpha flight yoke uh the best your only real option budget options were either the ch 
uh, series that I'm aware of, or like the Logitech um, yoke, which in my personal opinion, again, didn't like it. Um, and I had it, didn't take me long before I had buyer's remorse. That was another one that broke my heart because we didn't have much money when I bought it. Um, Honeycomb releasing the Alpha Flight Yoke changed the game. They are by far, in my opinion, especially if you're on a budget, they are the best bang for the buck flight controls. The both uh, inward and outward motion, both the left and right 180 degree turn axis on the yoke itself um, are very smooth. There is very little center detent. Um, the buttons and switches on it are have a nice tactile feel. The only thing that I actually don't like about the Honeycomb uh, Alpha and the Bravo, actually, never mind, not the Bravo. Bravo doesn't have it. The Honeycomb yoke is the actual Honeycomb texturing. Uh, I don't like the Honeycomb texturing, and here's why. Here's why. I live in the desert. I live in Tucson, um, and uh, it doesn't take long for dust to get up in there, and it, it takes a lot longer to get it out. So that is the only reason why I say x to the honeycomb texturing in the background. All, all silliness aside, when it comes to just cleaning flight controls, put the cleaning aspect aside. They're an absolutely amazing piece of hardware. Um, I just recently um, uh, handed off my, excuse me, my honeycomb yoke uh, to someone else. And that was just because, again, I have all this other stuff that I'm constantly testing. I have the Airbus TCA on the desk. Uh, for when I'm flying from the desk. And obviously I've got the full cockpit build behind me. Um, and we're going to talk about what's sitting in the center where this would be. Otherwise I'd still have it. It just, it was sitting in the closet forever. And it's just like, it's one of those, I'd rather see someone get some use out of it. Um, but it is a wonderful, wonderful piece of hardware. And the price is perfect for what you get. It blows the Logitech out of the water. I don't care. I will argue that tooth and nail. The resolution on the sensoring is far better, and especially with their new one here, um, if the resolution was increased. I believe it's using better hall sensors now. Um, the action of it is wonderful. It's configuration options, especially with all the uh, switches and everything that you guys can see here on it. It's got your starter and ignition and all that good stuff. It's got your beacon lights, your batteries, your, your avionics switches on it. It's got your mic switches, your trim, and all of the trim switches are on it. Um, it it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of hardware that I extremely recommend if you're someone who's looking for general aviation specific. The reason why, like I said, I started with the flight sticks from Burple and things like that is because now we're getting into very specific aircraft. I would not want to fly an F-16 with a flight yoke. I would not want to try to fly a helicopter with a flight yoke. It's not that it can't be done, but I feel like it would be much, much more challenging, much more difficult to do so. Um, but there are people who do it. So just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so that's the yoke. Now moving, staying with the same company, the most versatile throttle in existence, in my opinion, at the time of making this video. And again, for the price. The price is phenomenal. And in case you guys are wondering, there it is. Okay. Um, I absolutely love the Bravo. The Bravo is an amazing, amazing throttle. The other really cool thing is there are a bunch of add-ons for it. Uh, if you go on Etsy, um, you can go through my channel. I've done a bunch of reviews on Flight Sim Factory. does a bunch of really cool uh, full-scale handles and things like that for it. There's uh, better trim wheel grips for it. There's mount things that uh, can mount on top of the Bravo, tablets, tab holders, all kinds of stuff, guys. All kinds of stuff. The community really took well to the Bravo. Um, but the beautiful thing about the Bravo is all of the control options. Obviously you have the six independent levers that can be tied into anything. It's got thrust reverser options for the, um, excuse me, commercial aircraft, the autopilot, full autopilot functionality with simply turning a switch and your axis can do th something different or your rotaries up here can do something different. Um, here you can see this, the adjustment rotary. And then behind this throttle here is where you'd have, where you actually select indicated airspeed, altitude, heading mode, whatever it may be. Um, all of these axes can be tuned and configured to do whatever you want them to do. They have detents down at the bottom, uh, for things like thrust reverse, or there's actually a button depression at the bottom of each one. So your cutoffs can be uh, triggered. It's slick. It's really, really slick. Got your landing gear handle with indication lights, got your flap lever. If you don't want to use a flap lever, you can use your last axis for flaps. Goes on and on and on. It is a one and done. 
Uh, I will tell you another tip. If you're someone who's uh, into DCS World like myself, or even Microsoft Flight Simulator has some of the same aircraft, but DCS World especially, uh, your Warbirds, your P-51 Mustangs, your... Um, um, gosh, why am I drawing blanks all of a sudden? Your Messerschmitts, et cetera. Um, these are, this is a wonderful throttle box for it because you have your flap axis, your throttle axis, your mixture axis, all of it's right there. And uh, it makes it actually a lot of fun, especially the P-51 um, is the one that I've primarily flown with the Bravo and it worked really, really well. Um, so it, it just, it's one of those ones that's, that's a one and done. So that these two combined, um, the other thing that this one has is triggers in front of it um, that can are axis. So you can, if you wanted to, you could use them as rudder pedals. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could, you could. Okay. And so technically with just these two devices here, you could have a full cockpit again. You could have everything that you need to do. Okay. Um, so that is the Honeycomb Bravo and the Honeycomb Alpha XPC uh, yoke. They are wonderful for GA. Um, the nice thing about the Bravo is it's great no matter what your preference is, no matter what it is. Okay. The configuration options are almost endless with it. Okay. So now let's get into some expansion hardware, things that uh, you, you want after you've built your cockpit. Some of the two of the devices, four of the devices, I guess, that knowing what I know now, I would never want to let go of now. Um, so let's go ahead and start with my, where it all began, the Class Echo. The Class Echo is a, now the one catch to the Class Echo, I'm going to tell you right now, is it does require the use of SPAD next. That is the one requirement. Um, but, uh, and SPAD not next for those of you who don't know is a third party software that is used to basically connect, uh, third party devices with a simulator X is a middleman. Uh, so you would configure all of this that you're seeing on the screen through SPAD, um, loads up the profile and SPAD communicates the device to the simulator. Okay. And this is specific to things like Microsoft flight simulator and X plane 11 and X plane 12, right? <clears throat> so the class echo, um, now you have the physical device, which. Looks like this, okay? Or you have the mobile version, which is exactly what it sounds like. It can be used on a Kindle, can be used on the cell phone, which you guys are taking up right now for me, otherwise I'd show you. Um, and you literally, it takes everything in touchscreen and it turns your, whatever that mobile device is into damn near a full uh, cockpit, okay? It can do literally, now this is the cradle guys, this is not the price of the, um, class echo class echo mobile. I think on the app store is like $20. Okay. It's really not bad at all, but it can do whatever you want it to do. Okay. So you have your nav, your comm radios, autopilot functions, flight information, flight information is going to give you all of your engine performance. Like here, let me give you a little bit closer look here. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. So it gives you a ton of, ton of information. Um, you can control just about anything as you guys can see in the image here. It also works with things like Knobster. Okay. Um, maybe you can't see that actually. I just saw that. There you go. You guys can see it right there, right where my mouse is. Okay. Um, so it can work with third party encoders and things like that. It's really a fantastic piece of hardware or software. The mobile version. I love it. I, I usually use the mobile version over the hardware. The only reason why I'm using the hardware lately uh, is because now it's back on the desk and I'm finding it's pretty good. A couple days ago, I had both of them going. You can use both of them at the same time. So that's the other really cool select part. You can sort of make, if you have two or three tablets, you could make a, really a full cockpit. You could have your audio panel on one. You could have an autopilot on another and all of your flight information on, on the last one. The other really cool thing that I like about the Class Echo is based on the way the software and the profile is laid out, uh, you can also control uh, in-game sim rate. So if you want to speed up the sim or slow down the sim, you can actually do that uh, directly from this device. Uh, it has been a incredible help for me making my guides and things like that. I love the class echo configuration is very, very quick. Uh, spad next has an ability where basically you click on a button with inside of spad. Okay. So you open up the spad configuration, you select the class echo, you would select, I want to map this button. And then there's an option that says online snippets. And then from online snippets, you can either configure the entire device by aircraft. Um, so. TBM 930 or the Cessna Citation Longitude, you would just click Longitude and it will ask you, do you want to configure this whole device for the Longitude? Yes, I do. And all of the Longitude options will load right then. And then every time you switch aircraft, SPAD knows that. 
So you don't have to worry about changing profiles. Just when you jump into an aircraft, if you switch from the longitude to the TBM, from the TBM to the Cessna 172, from the Cessna 172 to the H145, it knows that and automatically changes profile for you. Again, I think it's $20 for the mobile version of it if you don't want to buy the hardware. The only check to the hardware is, is it's, uh, there is some DIY, but he does a wonderful YouTube video and breaking down everything that you need to buy for it and how to assemble it. But if you don't want to go through all that, just get the mobile version. And again, it's available on the Amazon store, the iPhone, Apple store, as well as the um, um, Android store, obviously. That's what I'm using here is the Android. So really, really slick piece of hardware slash software using your hardware with the software to make it into hardware. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Next one, here's one that I've recently been working with. Now, this one is still not quite up to where the Class Echo is yet, but it has a ton of potential. If you are someone who is using the G1000 flying a Cessna 172, some general aviation aircraft, this thing is awesome. Um, it is lately, they call it the world's smallest cockpit. I, as you guys can see up here, I think they should have called it the world's smallest autopilot or the world's smallest avionics. Um, uh, and that would have been more accurate, but it is an avionics platform. Um, I think I have it put away at the moment. I was cleaning my office the other day, but it's about the size of my hand. Okay. So you can compare it to the microphone there. It's about the size of my hand. Okay. So it really is very small and extremely versatile. Uh, the blue functions are shift functions basically you push the top um encoder there and then whatever is in blue is what these independent buttons will do you can control both fms1 and fms2 so g1000 pfd and mfd um it's not just restricted to the g1000 but the g1000 is jeff definitely where it shines um now he is constantly updating the profiles and creating new profiles for it um it's in constant development it works very very well with moby flight moby flight is Sort of does like what SPAD.next does. It's, it's another third-party software that, that acts as a middleman between device and simulator. Um, it is free. It's a little bit more confusing to use, not nearly as uh, user-friendly, and in the aspect, it's not near as intuitive as, um, as I would say that uh, SPAD.next is. But it's free. That's the other catch. Um, and it's designed very specifically for things that are like Arduino board controls. For those of you who don't know, Arduino boards are something that's a very DIY uh, circuit board. It's very common, very heavily used in DIY uh, tools like this and configurations, your own hardware, et cetera. So the Octavi, um, I will admit, is a bit on the uh, pricey side. It's a bit um, more expensive than, um, than some of the other hardware we have out here. So if we select buy, you guys can see there's its price right there. That's in euros. Um, and then you guys can do the conversion for USO. So I'm not going to try to brain that right now. Um, it's been a long day, uh, but you guys can pick that up. I've done a couple of reviews on it. You guys, please feel free to check them out. I think you'd really enjoy them it, and you guys get to see it in all of its functionality and glory and how it operates and how small it really is. I will say this, this thing is really awesome for virtual reality. Um, I have used it in VR multiple times. And what I will do is place it on my lap. What I ended up doing with mine, and again, if it wasn't the closet, I would go and get it. I put some Velcro on the back of mine. And then I have a Velcro strap that I put around my leg now. And I stick that to it. And it's got a long enough USB-C cable that I don't worry about it. And when I'm on the motion pit, I'll put it on my leg. And it makes it much, much easier to control uh, my sim. And I don't have to worry about it sliding off and rolling off because of the Velcro. Um, and again, so an extra what, $6 out of my pocket. And it became basically like a kneeboard autopilot, right? Um, that I can use in virtual reality. And I've gotten really good with the uh, with the muscle memory as far as remembering where the buttons are. Um, so a couple options for you guys. Again, this is definitely a great tool for virtual reality. It's a great tool if you're extremely limited on space. Um, it takes up very, very little. Um, again, about the size of this. Maybe, actually it's smaller than that. It is smaller than my phone case. Um, so keep that in mind. These last two pieces of hardware, again, are going to be very, uh, aircraft specific and situation specific. However, the reason why I am mentioning these is because they have changed the simulation for me. Now, if you guys look, you guys can see them underneath my primary monitors there. That is the G 1000 on the, in the center and the GNS 530 just to the left of it. Um, the reason why I'm bringing these up is because they've changed the sim for me. Um, the GNS 530, I stayed away from um, pretty much for the last three years. 
uh, about four months ago, Flight Sim Builder reached out um, and, and we got to talking and uh, I did a review of the GNS 530, which is this one here, and as well as their G1000. Um, a lot of people have complained about the branding up on the top of the thing. And we're talking about real sim gear and how it's better. You know, they don't like branding. Real sim gear does branding too. So I just want to toss that out real quick. And I have nothing against real sim gear. They're, they're fantastic equipment. Fantastic. I got to try it out over at the uh, Flight Sim Expo in Houston. Beautiful pieces of hardware. They're gorgeous. And they work fantastically. For me, from an operational standpoint, they work the same. But from a build quality standpoint, real sim gear might have a little edge. But when you look at the price difference, I will tell you that in my personal opinion, Real Sim Gear's price point doesn't meet the build quality difference between these. Um, again, they're very high build quality. They are amazing build quality. The other thing that I really like about Flight Sim Builder is their customer service. Um, if you have any problem, uh, a story that I like to tell is I didn't even notice it at first. Uh, when they first sent me the G1000, the top right corner bezeling here, you can see it right there, was sort of sinking down a little bit. And I'm talking about a little bit, right? Um, definitely was not impeding on the screen, was not affecting my ability to use it. I could still see everything great. So that, I mean, that should tell you how little it was sinking down, right? And it was probably from transport. Again, I live in the desert. It was sent to me in the summer. Lord knows how hot that box got, right? Well, the developer knows it. He didn't like it. And I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, we're fine. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, whether you were a customer or not, I would do the same thing. He didn't ask me to do another video on it. He just, he's like, I want you to have a nice one. He sent me a different bezel of a different material, um, the, a new material he just started using for that reason. Cleaned it up. He, he wanted to send me a whole new unit and pay for me to ship the other one back. I'm like, no, I'm like, just send me the trim. I can do it myself. And he did. And I uh, took care of it, but the customer service was on par. They're, they're just great people to talk to. Uh, really, really awesome job. And the, so you have the customer service, the build quality is fantastic. The functionality is beautiful. I had to shoot myself in the, you know what here, because one of the things that I did not, was not ever aware of, I, I sort of just, I loaded it up, loaded SPAD up, SPAD.next already had profiles for them from flight sim builder and so i just fired up and they just worked right i only found out a couple weeks ago they actually have their own software so i have no problem laughing at myself as a dunce moment for me but they also have their own software that also makes it very plug and play i was testing it out the other day it works great uh there's no issues with it whatsoever um so i want you guys to be aware of that if you don't want to use spad.next uh, they have their own software that obviously is free to download what, you know, with the device, you know, kind of thing. So you don't have to worry about any other third party integration, things like that. You just use their software and plug and play and off you go. Uh, but they changed the simulation for me. The GNS 530, I, I, I love using it now uh, because it's much easier to control it physically with your fingers than trying to use the mouse and having the plane turn. Your mouse cursor moves. And I know there's the latch mode, but I don't like the whole blue highlight thing that happens in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hate it. Uh, it's just another immersion breaker for me. So they are wonderful pieces of hardware. They are very obviously aircraft specific or avionics specific, I should say. Um, but the nice thing is yes and no. Actually, I'm going to sort of change that. Like the G1000, for example, all of the autopilot features that are on it exist in other aircraft. Your flight directors, autopilot, heading altitude. These are all going to exist on other aircraft. Your radios, your, alt your altitude selectors, everything. All of this still exists in other aircraft, even the commercial airliners. Uh, it's just really the central display that would obviously not be particularly effective in it. Um, but uh, everything else you could use on any other aircraft. So that's the other advantage. It is nice. Um, when I'm used to flying the Airbus, I was flying the Airbus a couple days ago, uh, the fly-by-wire. Um, I use this, you know, and I just hit my autopilot and I hit my different settings and do what I need to do. And it's still a heck of a lot better than reaching for the mouse and controlling it from the FCP. Well, you guys, that is my list of what I deem to be um, some of the best flight sim hardware. Um, I'm going to be doing a VR version of this here pretty soon. I've got another VR that is currently in testing. We're currently testing the Vire Arrow. Uh, I've been messing around with that. We got a video coming out on that very soon. But I wanted you guys to sort of start being able to think about, you know, I, like I said, Christmas is coming around the corner. I know we're going to start spending some money soon. Maybe there's some upgrades coming. Uh, you want to give the wife or husband, whomever it may be, um, a honey wish list kind of thing, 
you know, perfect time for it. And so I figured we'd start with this series. And uh, there's going to be a few more of these coming out. We're going to talk about head tracking, track IR, um, different keyboard peripherals and things like that as time goes on. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Let me know if there's anything that you would like me to review or check out or something that you'd like me to mention. And I will definitely seek to do so. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one.